Good morning and welcome to Positive Vibes, making positivity and gratitude louder in a podcast world. Uh, I'm sorry about the video connection this morning. It's, I don't know, I just decided not to work. And um, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for my guest to come online here. Let me see here. This morning, I will be chatting with Craig Davidson uh, via Zoom call. I met Craig in, uh, oh, here he comes. Here's entering right now. Hi, Craig. Sorry, my video isn't working, but I can, I can see you. Can't hear you there. Jane? Yeah, I can I can hear you now. Okay. I, sorry about that. I tried to get on. I couldn't log on for some reason. I kept joining the meeting and I kept on didn't have a link, but I'm all set now. Okay, right on, right on. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? I'm doing phenomenal. Yeah, it's been what? Almost coming up on well, it's about three and a half years. I think so, yeah. Yeah, since I was there in uh, Phoenix and met you. And uh, all right, well, I I know that I know you got to you got to sort of have to cut this show, cut it short this morning so we can get you out and get you to where you're going, uh, get you to church on time. Um, But uh, yeah, so I guess I'll just, you know, a little quick little intro. I met Craig Davidson. Uh, He works at the Runner's Den running store in Phoenix, Arizona. I was on a road trip in 2017 visiting my Aunt Bina in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and she made sure to uh, drive me to the Runner's Den and introduce me to Craig before I left town. And I'm grateful she did because, um, yeah, he's just so inspiring and uh, so far as running and uh, inspired me to get going on my run streak uh, because of his. And, uh, you know, therefore I'm coming up on a thousand days here soon. And um, yeah, so I guess we'll just get right into the questions for the sake of time. Uh, And uh, when did you start running? I started running in November of 1977. Uh, I weighed about 140 pounds when I got out of college, and then I went up to about 180 pounds in about 15 months. But I decided to start running to lose some weight. Okay, okay. And the rest, um, and the rest is kind of history that I tell people. Yeah, yeah. Just kept, kept on running and yeah, definitely. Right on, I totally understand that. You just start and you just don't stop. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, until I was forced to, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that hospital stay definitely put a stint in there, but, you know, got right back up, started running again. Yeah. Um, okay, and um, I, was another, I was wondering how long since you, how long after you started running until you ran your first marathon? I ran my first marathon four months after I started running. I started running November 1st of 77, ran my first marathon in February of 78, up in oh, uh, up in uh, Seaside, Oregon. Right on. Uh, yeah, four months. That's that's a short time to go from, you know, not running to running 26.2 miles. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it, but at that time, I didn't know any different. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, it was like, I think eight months before I ran my first marathon after I started running in the first place, but I had several half marathons under my belt by then. Um, Okay, and uh, up up till now, how many marathons have you run? Uh, 255. Jeez, 255, that's a lot. That's a lot of miles if you look at it that way too. Um, And, so far as so far as races have you have you tapered down like like rather than running full marathons do you run more shorter races anymore 
Yeah, I do. But the problem now is there, there's no race here in Arizona. Well, well, yeah, yeah. It's it's like as of late, there's no no regular races. Have you have you been running uh, any virtuals? Uh, no, I haven't run a virtual. And I, I, the last race I did was Turkey Trot and Mesa in uh, in, in November. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then my last marathon was LA Marathon uh, last last March. Right on. So so that LA Marathon that would have been like pretty much right before the the main lockdown or quarantine. Yeah, two days after the race, the whole the whole state of Arizona or state of California shut down. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess you ran that race just in time. Yeah, I did. I, I'm one of the few that have done all 35 LA marathons. So I, I basically had to go back and do that race last year. Oh, geez. Right on. Well, congratulations on you know running all those. Um. And so. I was just wondering, uh, in con in connection, you started running on you started running in November of two, of nineteen seventy seven, and have you been just been running every day since? It, my, my my running streak started on November the fifth, nineteen seventy eight. Okay, so so you were running for right about a year, and then started running every day. Yes. Right. On. Um. And what was the uh, what was behind your beginning your run streak running every day? There wasn't one. Um, my my wife Marie and I drove to Turkey, South Dakota to run the uh, Longest Day Marathon in November of '78. And I ran the race on a Sunday, and I ran the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and then uh, I thought it'd be really fun to have a hundred days in a row. And then my sister Karen got married here in uh, in Arizona in. Uh, 79. So my wife and I came out from Minnesota. I was getting close to 100 days. I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have 100 days in a row? Maybe 200, 300, 400, and then the rest is history. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And have there, I know I've, I've experienced this quite a bit, but have there been days when you don't feel like running and procrastinate to the last minute? Not really. I mean, I, I typically run early in the morning to get it done so I can uh, have the rest of the day basically somewhat free. Okay, okay. That, made, that makes total sense. Yeah, I've, I've actually told myself I should start doing that, running in the morning before work every day. That way I, you know, don't have to worry about doing it after work and, you know, if I happen to have stuff going on or whatever, but I always seem to put it off until, you know, it's dark and okay. Well, I gotta go now. Uh, yeah, this this morning is interesting. I was gonna run eight miles this morning, and I got two and a half miles out, and I got hit by a downpour and thunder and lightning and a little bit of hail as well. So I basically I only ran seven, so I cut my run short this morning. Yeah, yeah. I was I uh, I was looking at my I saw one of my aunt Vina's posts yesterday and yesterday or the day before, and she said it's been raining down there. So. Yeah, we had a little rain this in the afternoon, and uh, but it, it it rained hard for about five minutes and it quit. But this morning it was it snowed like rain. I think it's gonna rain down a little bit. I got out two and a half miles. It was like an Oregon Oregon Washington rainstorm. It just basically came down and, and bucketed them. Jeez, yeah, I know. Here, what was it? A week or two ago, maybe a week ago, I was running across the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and I ran. I started out running across the bridge, started down the hill toward the bridge from the parking lot, and it was like sprinkling. And then by the time I got out to the bridge, it was pouring down rain and just, I'm just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm wet now. So I just kept on running the entire distance I had planned, so. <laughs> the rain here was coming down sideways. That's how hard it was raining. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's crazy. Got to, we have a small wash by our house. When I started my run, there was no water in the wash and they came back with about probably about six inches deep. Oh man. Yeah, I know I know on when I was on that run on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, I happened to hit a, a puddle in the middle of the path and it was, you know, fairly deep puddle and my feet got totally soaked. Yeah. I hate that. I don't mind running in the rain, but when I step in the puddle, that's what really makes everything not colder, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um and 
How long have you worked at the Runner's Den? I started working there in November of 83, so I've been there a little over 37 years. Gee, right on. That's a long, that's a long stint. It is, yeah. More than most people are alive, I think, too, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. Um, and before you started working at the Runner's Den, um, had you had you worked at any other running stores? I had worked at a uh, athletic attic in Minnesota. I was going to graduate school in Minnesota for a couple of years. Okay, and uh, yeah, I was I was thinking about that when I was writing these questions down, and um, it must uh, it must does it, it must have a play in your uh, in your um, running to uh, it must have a play in your running uh, running races and you know just the whole business of running personally since you uh, since you 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 know you work professionally there in the store and uh, helping other runners all the time yeah the running community is fairly big but it's fairly small you know, and it, it's almost like people who know buddy, it's, almost, it, it's like a big family to me, being there at the store for so many years. I can, I've helped two and three generations of people over the years, and, you know, some people born, you know, some people get married, people have kids, and so it, it makes it great for uh, to work every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I hear you there. It's like the, you know, running community, as with, you know, any community, it's like, you know, becomes, you know, becomes one, becomes family. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I'm curious if you, if you, if you have a rough ballpark figure if you, or if you know exactly, but I have a question here. How many runners have started their streak because they were inspired by your streak? I don't know. I mean, when my streak ended, I had so many people come to the store commenting on Facebook or emails, I mean, there's been a number of, and it's been, I don't know, I mean, close to a hundred, because I have people who, who on Facebook, they started my, their street because of me, because of, like me, you started your street because of me. Uh, and I've got probably, you know, it's really hard to give a number, but I mean, once, once my street ended, I got so many comments from people saying, you know, I started my, I was so inspired by your street, that I started to speak on, on my own as well, too, that, a friend of mine from Texas, uh, she started her running streak on my uh, the day I got out of the hospital, same day I did. And then Blanca's goal was to do 100 days in a row, and then she quit at 100. She goes, don't pressure me to do anything longer, she said, because it's just bring out my body. So I said, yeah, I, yeah, I know how I felt after I ended my streak after 15,000 days, and it was well. Yeah. Well, I was, I was, uh, I was I was thinking recently about uh, you know I'm coming up on a thousand days and I was thinking recently of a friend locally here, who you know who told me that he was he used to have a running streak because he knew a guy that had like 40 years of running streak or whatever here locally, and um, this friend of mine went ran 1,000 days in a row and then you know decided to just take a day off and celebrate and so he did. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't even worry about it anymore. Yeah. Um, okay. And what, over all these years of running, what's your, what's your favorite memory of running? Well, it, it's so hard to tell. You know, I've been, uh, I've had a lot of success in running, you know, maybe running my, uh, running my 228 marathon in North Dakota in 1980. Uh, 82, uh, running the fourth fastest time in North America for uh, 50 miles in 1987. Uh, you know, you know. I think my, my satisfaction now is, is influencing and encouraging other people to do it as well as to just get to start a running club where it's some type of exercise program just to encourage them as well as they do it. Yeah. Right. But it's hard to pick out, you know, one specific race because I've been running so many races over the years. Uh, you know, I've run all 35 LA marathons, 32 St. George marathons, 32 Whiskey Road 
there in mind. So it's really hard to have one or two memories because it's, there's so many memories I could have. As well. It's kind of hard to pick up one or two. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, and I was yeah curious as to how is uh, how is your wife Irene with all of your running? She's laughing in the background. <laughs> uh, I think in early years it was nice because you know, she went to a lot of the races and when it was faster I was done and then we were on the way home. Now she's got to wait half the day for me to finish a marathon. So I said now she's first she was encouraging and now she's basically now she's tolerating it as what's happening now. But 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 she she's been supporting it for so many years. You know, it gets to be part of your life you know, I'm just, it's not if I'm gonna run, it's when I'm gonna run. You go on vacation, I go for a run. Uh, so I had to sometimes, you know, get out early in the morning to put on the cage or get a meeting in the morning. So it's just, uh, but it, it, it's just been a big support in my life as well. Yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, okay, and I'm, I was curious, have you run internationally or has your running just been in the U.S.? Um, I've been just to the U.S. I mean, I've run the Anchorage Marathon twice. Um, I've run the race. I run the race called Run to the Sun in Hawaii. That was from uh, the bottom of uh, the top of Maui Mall to the top of Haleakala, and I ran that in '91. Okay, right on. And um, okay, well, that's the end of my the end of the questions I have written down, and. Uh, just wanted to buzz through those real quick. Um, and so I, I was also curious, do you have any, like, do you, I understand, you know, with races being pretty much all shut down because of COVID, you know, currently, other than that, do you have any specific personal goals for, you know, your running? Not necessarily. Basically, the goal now is to just go out and run every day. You know, I, my streak is back up to uh, 287 days. I, I pale the comparison to your streak, but you know, uh, hopefully I'll get to a thousand days. It'd be nice to have a thousand days again. Uh, yeah, that'll be what and I keep winning after you. know, it's hard having goals when there's not when there's no longer any races and stuff. But the key is not just to run every day and just enjoy it. Be more of a social runner as opposed to just a paper runner. Yeah, I hear you there. I, uh, yeah, it's like, as you see on my posts, you know, 90, well, yeah, pretty much 99% of the time I'm out there running solo, you know, and it's, but it's like every now and again, I get a friend who's like, hey, you want to go for a run? And it's like, yeah, definitely, you know, I'm sick of running alone. But, uh, you know, other than that, it's, other than that, it's pretty nice being out there just running on my own. You know, being being at peace with the road, the running, the whole thing. Yeah, because I haven't run with anybody since probably October of um of 1990. Because after I did St. George Marathon, I just brought the group over to Scottsdale every Saturday morning. Since I'm so slow, I, I haven't been out there for since October, and then you know, I'm up to I'm up usually about four o'clock, four thirty in the morning, running here in Phoenix, and there's been just nobody to run with. Uh, my grandson would, would occasionally run, but when he was, he did a lot of racing together last year. But now with everything being shut down, there's no racing. But he's about the only guy I've run with for the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you got you got your grandson to run with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, that, that's like that's like so cool. It's not like it's not only like the running community is family. It's like, you know, when you have your family, your actual family there, you know, running with you, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. That, may, that makes it nice. You know, he, we, but he's not running as much as he used to. He's been involved with instruments at school. He plays the bass cello, the cello, the drums, and the key part. He, he's doing a lot more music stuff as opposed to party stuff. He comes over to the house. And I said, Jamie, do you want to run with me? He goes, I didn't bring my shoes. He just happened to have a size. I wanted to take my shoes. So I got some older shoes over everyone with. 
I don't have any shorts. Jay and I got shorts in it, but there's no excuse. Papa, I just don't want to run to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one thing I want to mention too is that, you know, I have my running streak, but I think I'm, I'm known more for my, for my money fighting. I don't know if I told you, I have done money running every day since April of 83. At, at least a penny a day. Yeah, I was, that's that's another thing I was going to ask you about, was your, uh, your finding money streak out there on your run streak. Yeah, so as, as of today, I'm at uh, $10,338.50. Jeez. And yeah, and I've I've seen on your post before that's uh, that you found you know smashed coins and just all kinds of coins and all sorts of money out there. And uh, how many? Uh, like I was wondering if you have a count so far as the amount of uh, the amount of money in the smashed coins. Uh, all I know is I've got about three shoe boxes full of coins the bank won't take. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, uh, you know, my wife wants to get rid of them, but I can't get rid of them. <laughs> and we'll take them. And of course, many years ago, a friend of mine moved to uh, Philadelphia and he brought all my money to the mint and I got a check for $287 from the mint. But now they've stopped that coin, the mutilated coin redemption, redemption program. So I've got two big shoe boxes sitting in the front with like, all my spirit, all, all the pennies. And I've got a couple of skippy peanut butter jars with the and the nickel dimes and quarters there as well. But I'm looking for a way to get rid of the money, but I just can't get rid of the money. Like, the money <laughs> shortage, you know, the mint would love to take it back and melt it down, but I just can't get it from the mint. And of course, it, it, it costs prohibitive to send it out. It costs more to send it out there than it would be the, the money I get back as well. I'm kind of stuck for the time being. I was, I got to be in the right place at the right time or get some type of bank or one of publicity to get all the money out of my hand. But today I found the they found a 1944 penny this morning. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that's definitely an old one. Yeah. I got a Snoopy jar with carpet. Snoopy jar is one of my old coins, of my old quarters, silver quarters, the silver diamonds. Uh, the oldest time I found it is a 1987 uh, or 1888 Barber dime I found many years ago. Oh, my gosh. But I also found a, I have found a $100 bill three times. And I found a, uh, a uh, fifty dollars uh, gold coin, probably about ten years ago. It's worth about eighteen hundred dollars now. Oh, moly! Yeah, it was worth about two hundred and fifty when I found now, but the price of gold was going up. It's worth about eighteen hundred now. Sweet, that's awesome. That's a killer score. It is. <laughs> In fact, this trip to Hawaii was paid for with all the spare change I picked up. Uh, on the ground. At that time, I was about $3,000. The whole trip was paid for by the, all the spirit chains picked up on the ground. Oh my gosh. That, yeah, that, that, that will definitely, you know, that definitely reminds me to start picking up every every uh, coin I find on the ground. I, I jokingly say it, it pays to run. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, well, I, uh, since the at the beginning there, this uh, the COVID thing, as soon as COVID hit, I was like, I started seeing coins all over, but it's like, you know, I don't know, something with the, uh, it never bothered me before to pick up coins, but, you know, something with the uh, bacteria and germ scare, you know, stopped me from picking up coins. And I'm like, man, I should really get back, get back into that, you know? And, I don't know. Of course, here in Arizona, I'm wearing gloves when I run in the morning, so I'm not really pretty concerned about bacteria, but I'm, I'm wearing gloves <laughs> when I run. It's a little bit chilly here in the morning running here in Arizona. Yeah, true. I, I could just wear my gloves and not worry at all about it. But <laughs> Which, as a matter of fact, I just picked up a, a brand new pair of Nike running gloves at a store for like five or ten bucks. I forget they were on clearance. So. Well, you can't, you can't go wrong with that for sure. Yeah, definitely. It was a little while back. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I I would love to make it back down there to Phoenix, you know, one of these days, and go for a run with you. I don't. Um, 
I don't know if I can keep up with you though, Shane. No problem. <laughs> you may have, you may have to slow down to run with me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh, trust me. I, I need to slow down, period, just to, uh, you know, just so I can keep running, you know, instead of these super fast run streaks. And then I'm like dead. And it's like, oh my God, I should have slowed down to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's one of my main problems is uh, keeping it slow from the beginning. You know, forcing myself to keep it slow from the beginning. Yeah, but well, once you get old, there's no there's no problem with slowing down for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I I understand that, um, which I'm sure I'll understand more as time goes on. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well. Yeah, uh, like uh, I guess that's about that's about it for my for my questions. And um, I was just wondering, is there anything you'd like to add? Any tips or whatever for the running community? Not really. I mean, uh, I, I think just the key is just going out and doing something. You know, never compare yourself with anybody else because you're going to be intimidated by it. I tell people like, the three things I like to encourage you to start running is to. One is, is, is be consistent. Uh, two is ha have an accountability group, some to run with, and some to uh, bounce things off of. And the third thing is to have fun. You know, because if you can, if you're consistent, you're going to be you're be more uh, prone to being a little more healthier. If you have an accountability group, you're more accountable to them. And the third thing is to have fun because if you don't have those three things, you're not going to enjoy it. And there's no reason why you should be running. And not enjoying it. Running is a, a spare time thing. And if, if you're frustrated, it's like working. You don't enjoy going to work. Find another job. Uh, if you don't enjoy running, find something else to do. But just in case, you stay active for as long as you can. Yeah, definitely. And that, you know, it's like that's uh, that's definitely you know I relate so much to what you just said because it's like. Um, so long as I'm getting out every day and doing something, you know, because of my MS and the fatigue or whatever, sometimes maybe I'm just too tired after work. Some days I, uh, you know, after being on my feet all day at work, I don't really feel like running, but I got to keep my streak alive. So I make sure and get out there and speed walk at least a mile to keep and it alive. Once you get out, you don't want to get out with it. When you get out, you're so glad you did. It's the hardest yeah. thing is opening up the door and going out. Of course, living up in Washington, you have the problem with the rain, and sometimes you go out and it's raining, and do I really want to go out? But once you go out, you're so glad you went out. Once you get back, you're so glad you, you did it that day. Yeah, definitely. Always, always glad, you know, no matter how unglad I am before I go out, I'm definitely glad when I get back. <laughs> and I, I think the key is, is to never take your running and your health for granted. Now, I learned that in the hospital, you know, you know. God sometimes puts things in our way. We have no choice and we can't run. So, you know, never take your running and life for granted. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, always. That's, you know, I never take it for granted. And I'm always, you know, working toward better health, you know, better, uh, bettering myself. And, um, yeah, and it's like something else you said there about, uh, having fun if it wasn't fun you know basically why would you be doing it and it's yeah. like you know it's like i was thinking about that this morning today i'm celebrating i'm celebrating uh 24 years or 29 years clean and sober and um you know it's it's like if it wasn't not necessarily if it wasn't fun but yeah if it wasn't fun if it didn't add to my life i wouldn't still be at it you know well, congrats on your streak that that takes more discipline I think than running every day is you know staying sober. You know, oh, thank, it's, thank you. It's so tempting to go back and you know you just got to be the right type of people and right type of group to continue to keep, to keep on keeping on. Yeah, and it's you know it's the same thing with uh, sort of same almost the same thing with running. You know it's just like well it is the same in that respect. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't still be doing it. You know, yeah. and. Uh, you know, it just adds to my life. Um, it, 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 it's a motivation to keep you going. You feel so much better once you do it. Yeah. 
whether it's hiking, walking, or doing something, you feel so much better after you do it. It's like eating a big meal, you know, you eat a big meal and you're so glad to eat it, but then sometimes it's overdo it, you know, you, you pay the consequence. Same thing with running. If you overdo it, you're going to pay the consequence. Yeah, definitely. Got to make sure not to not to overdo it. And some some days I'm some days when I'm out there running, I think of that. You know, when I'm out there and I have like five miles done, and I'm like, yeah, let's let's keep going. I feel like keep going. And then you know, it's like get a get a minor a minor pain in my hamstring or something like that. You know, just a minor pain somewhere. And it's like, oh nope, I better quit here so I can keep on running tomorrow. <laughs> it's like people who go skiing and stuff. Just one more ski, one more ski run, and I'll be done. Well, they end up falling and breaking stuff. And they I should have quit this before I did that. Done. So it's just, uh, you just got, you just got to be smart. Yeah. And I, I think the older you get, the smarter I am. When I came back out of the hospital, I didn't push it too much. I started, of course, my wife said I should just stop and not start another streak. But I mean, I started doing one or two miles. I, I, I was just very patient coming back. Now I'm running about 45, 50 miles every week. Which is a far cry. I'm, I've run over, uh, as of this morning, I've run 215,235 miles. Oh my gosh. And I became more, I, I became the first streaker to hit uh, 200,000 miles during the running season. That was two years ago. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah, that's, um, I would say that's unfathomable, but that's quite amazing. A little, a little more than eight times around the world. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Super streaker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right on. Well, hey Craig, I want I want to you know I want to thank you so so very much for you know coming on my show this morning, and I'm grateful you were able to log on there. And, no, uh, I, I I was I got at the text. But I was honored to even be considered about that. Like, I, I think. I, I appreciate this interview more than you than you would even realize as well. Right on. Well, yeah, it's like uh, you know, that's the premise of my show here is uh, making positivity and gratitude louder in a podcast world, and it's like you know, adding positivity, adding value, and you know, you've added value to my life. So you know, I figured, hey, let's bring Craig on, you know, and maybe he can add some value to other people's lives. Well, I, I think I think my goal is to just influence at least one person every day in a positive manner. I think that's, yeah. important. that's important to put our, our, um, our positive post on everybody else. Like the same thing with doing MS. You can see another person has MS and encourage them. That makes it all work well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, all right. Well, yeah, and I just, uh, I know we probably got a few minutes we could, you know, come up with something, but I want to I make sure and let you get out of here so you can make it to church on time. Yeah, I, 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 I sent a text to my one of the ushers at church. I said, I may be late. I said, I've got a, a phone interview for until uh, about 10 to 10. So I've got like a five or six more minutes to get, to get redressed and then head out to church. Again. So we, yeah, I, I don't want to rush it. Anything else you want to add? Just you know, I get a few minutes still. Don't hesitate to ask anything more than as well. Yeah. Um, let's see. No, I think I pretty much covered everything that I was wanted to cover. I asked all the questions I wanted to ask. Um, oh, and just just to make sure, or just to recap, how many how many days are you at now on your uh, street? Two hundred eighty-seven. Two hundred eighty-seven. Yeah. Right on. All right. Cool. Well, keep on keep on running and keep on streaking. Okay. Well, thanks so much. But, you know, Send me the link to the podcast when they get a chance to chat. I'd, I'd like to uh, send it out on, on Facebook so my friends will see that. Oh, yeah, de definitely, definitely. When, when, I, when I get it put on my YouTube, I'll, I'll give you the link. Okay. Definitely. Right on. Well, hey, you take care, Craig, and, and uh, you and Irene have a phenomenal day. I will, too, and you enjoy it. And, and keep in touch, and Shane. Looking forward to having you come down and uh, tell Bina hi for me to talk to you as well during two. Okay. Well, you take care, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay, thanks, Shane. All right, thanks, Craig. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, and uh, yeah, I like that. You know, that was Craig Davidson, the guy who uh, inspired me to start my running streak.
um, where am I at here? Just a second. Let me see. Um, yeah, 974 days ago, started this streak with a friend of mine, and uh, for a month, and you all know the story. Got toward the end of the month, and uh, decided, hey, Craig's been doing his run streak for 40 some years, 42 or 43 years now. I think I'll just keep on running forever, you know. And uh, you know, since I feel so much better because you know, with my multiple sclerosis and all that, so. I just kept on running, and so did my friend Courtney, uh, you know, that I started this that month long streak with, and we're still running and still running strong. Um, and it's just like positive, you know, it, it, for me, it's all about positivity, gratitude, good vibes, positive vibes, uh, you know, exercise, fitness, anything I can do to add to, add to my life, to add to others' lives you know, is a good thing, uh, so far as positivity goes, and that's why I, uh, <clears throat> uh, that, that's why I, you know, do what I do, uh, and, um, you know, so, so far, so far as my running, and, you know, it just makes me feel makes me feel so much better physically and emotionally and spiritually and it just adds to my life and so that's why i'm so big on running and i just love being able to share and talk about running with others and hopefully you know like this morning show talking with craig hopefully that adds adds positivity and value to you know others lives it adds, adds it to your life and uh, yeah, it's just like amazing that, you know, uh, that we can, you know, do these things and keep running forever, uh, you know, and, and like, like Craig and I could agree on, you know, it's not like running super fast, super long distances all the time, you know, it's just keep on running every day, you know, maybe slowly jog if you don't really feel like running fast or even walk. And uh, just movement, getting out there, doing something, you know, or L what, the, what the running term is, LSD, long, slow distance, you know. Just run slow and go far, you know, you can run forever if you take it easy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, you know, it's, yeah, and <laughs> um, it's like yesterday, I, you know, I'm, I probably, I probably could have gone out and run a few miles afterwards or even beforehand. I, I, thought about it beforehand, but what I ended up doing was uh, I met a friend over here at Queen Defiance Park here in Tacoma, and uh, we we hiked, or we ended up walking, uh, just walking on Five Mile Drive. We were going to hike the trails, but they were like really packed, so we just walked Five Mile Drive, and uh, a little extra because we took off on a couple little short side jobs, but uh, yeah, it's like getting out there and walking five miles or even walking a mile, that counts for something. And it's all about getting out there and doing something, you know, consistently. You know, like this, like I was just talking to someone this morning about uh, me doing this uh, radio show, uh, my podcast, which is now a radio show. You know, ever since I started here at the station in April, it's, you know, consistent. Every every Sunday, uh, I'm here at the station, or that one Sunday I was in Carson City, Nevada, but I did my show remote over Facebook Live. It, it, you know, it worked out. Technology came in very handy that morning. Um, you know, 
did my, for those of you who didn't see, I was uh, doing my show, I did my show live while sitting in front of the uh, uh, Nevada State History Museum in Carson City, Nevada. And that was just so awesome to be able to do that and do it remotely like that. Um, you know, but it's all about consistency. You know, so far, so far as my being clean and sober, I've been clean and sober now for 10,593 days, if you count it by the day. And that's, you know, consistency every day. Just, nope, not going to do it today. And uh, not going to pick up, um, you know, and this like running this run streak, you know, it's just like consistently saying every day, okay, I got to get out and do this. I got to go do it. You know, and it's not like I got to or have to. It's like, I get to, I get to go do it. You know, and great being grateful about it. Um, and, you know, it's just like life. If, as you see in my posts on Instagram, if you watch my posts on Instagram and Facebook, um, that's that's the premise there. I'm grateful every day. I wake up grateful I can live another day. Grateful for another shot at this life gig. Grateful for another chance to make a difference. You know, and I try to every day, and uh, you know, just grateful for another opportunity to live this life. Um, you know, because it's like the alternative would suck, you know, not being able to, um, you know, and it's like just, uh, you know, so far, so far as myself and my attitude, my mindset, I have to be grateful, uh, just, I have to be grateful for the, for the gifts I'm, for the gifts I receive every day, every day is a gift. And I have to be grateful for all these gifts I receive and relish in that because the alternative would totally suck, <laughs> not being alive. And, uh, you know, it's like all the, um, it can be taken from us, it can be taken from us at any moment. And so every moment we just, you know, need to be, I think we need to be grateful for, you know, every moment and every everything, you know, and all the people in our lives and um, places, things, people, places, things, situations, you know, just got to be grateful for it all. Otherwise, it's like, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, consider the alternative. Um, you know, and uh, one thing I was I just recall, I was talking with a friend um, years ago, you know, probably 20 or 25 years ago, I was chatting with a friend, she was giving me a ride, and uh, I was sitting there and talking to her, and she said that, uh, give me a ride in the summer, it might have been Haiti, but anyway, uh, I was talking about, uh, we were talking about depression and all of a sudden it entered my mind and the opposite of the opposite of depression is gratitude as, as I see it you know I can and it's like if I have to be grateful for the things in my life I have to be grateful for everything you know and if I'm not if I'm not grateful for it you know if I'm not grateful for it being in my life, you know, what is the opposite of gratitude, feeling uplifted, or the opposite is depression, you know, feeling down, and uh, it's like, I'd rather be grateful for everything in my life than depressed about, you know, either what I don't have in my life, or that the things in my life are not better, you know, it's like, they're there, be grateful for them. And another thing I, uh, another thing I, you know, it's like uh, this morning I posted on Instagram and Facebook a picture of uh, a 
picture I shot this morning before it got wider and thing was was an hour long, thirty six o'clock in the morning we're just out here. I drove up top of the hill up by uh, Stanley and Seaports restaurant here in Tacoma and took a picture of downtown Tacoma and the port the port of Tacoma. You can see all the lights all over and um, it just looks so very cool. And you know, and it's like it's like I'd like to, you know, like I said in my post, you know, it'd be nice to be able to go it would be able to nice to be able to go to dinner there uh, tonight. Uh, but you know, during this during this time that we're going through with restaurants all shut down, social distancing and all that, that's impossible. But at least I can, you know, drop up there this morning and get the view of downtown Tacoma and the port of Tacoma and all that, you know, which is a beautiful view. And um, uh, once again, I show it on the, I bring it up and show it on the on the video camera, but the video is not working this morning on the Zoom camera, so um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> But it's a beautiful picture, and if you want to look at it, go check it out on my social media. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's just like I'm, uh, I'm just so very grateful this morning that I was able to bring uh, bring my friend Craig onto my onto Positive Vibes radio show this morning, and uh, you know, hopefully he was able to. I know he had it a bunch of positivity to my show, but I'm just hoping he was able to, you know, maybe inspire someone to start running or keep running or, uh, you know, maybe even start a run streak. Uh, you know, because, and it's like, I, I find, I find that amazing. Um, I find that amazing the amount of money he's found out on the road while running, <laughs> you know, but, but that's a lot of time to be able to find that much money over 40, you know, over 40 some years, um, over 40 years of running every day. It's a lot of time on the road, and like you said, so many hundreds of thousands, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles, um, you know, or like whatever number you said, I forget right off the top of my head. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of distance to cover, but, you know, 10,000 some odd dollars in coins and loose money, you know, loose bills found on the road. It's like, wow, that's amazing. That, that's enough inspiration. That would make me start running if I wasn't already. And, uh, that will make me, uh, that will make me start picking up all the money I see on the road. No matter, no matter the uh, any uh, any thoughts I may have against picking up that money, I'll just you know, like you said, I'll just start wearing gloves and uh, start wearing gloves, picking up money, not worrying about not worrying about paying the not worrying about what's on the um, well, still worrying about it. Yeah. At any rate, um, yeah, it's all about uh, positivity and inspiration and moving forward. And, um, yeah, it's, this morning I was uh, I was looking at this uh, looking at the best bet diet cookbook that I recently got in the mail from uh, the MS Hope website. I ordered it off there and. Uh, can't wait to dig into some of those recipes, you know, and adding on, getting into the, uh, this clean eating thing with best pet diet. And, uh, you know, so I can spice up my, uh, get into some of the better recipes, actually some recipes or what have you, uh, rather than, um, like my dinner last night, my dinner last night, it was, it was good and all, but it was, you know, kept it simple. I just went with uh, two big uh, what was it, golden Yukon potatoes, I think they were. But uh, just sliced those in thin slices. 
and we microwaved it for about 10 minutes and put uh, sprinkled some salt on it and I'm keeping it simple and that was super good just to sit there and eat those while watching the show on uh, Amazon Prime. You know, just keeping it simple, eating clean, exercising, running every day. I'm staying clean and sober. There, that's, you know, that works for me in my life. Um, you know, it's like I'm not trying to press anything on anyone else. You know, it's just like that's what works in my life. And you know, whatever anyone else can, whatever positivity anyone else can, you know, positive changes anyone else can use in their life uh, to. Um, a better their life, live a better life, add to the world, you know, whatever you can use in your life, that's cool. And if I, if I can help someone else or inspire someone else with what I'm doing, then, you know, that's, that's all the better. That's, that's what I'm here for. Um, you know, that, that's why I do what I do my book and my social media and my website and this radio show and everything is just to try and add value to the world instead of, you know, take, take, take. It's like give, give, give. And, um, yeah, but that's about it as far as that goes. Um, <laughs> let's see. And... Oh, one, one, uh, well, actually, I got a couple things. Um, next week, next week on my show will be a first for me. Excuse me. A first for me and a first for my show. It will be my first international guest on Positive Lives. My guest will be Lily Babcock from Salisbury, uh, England or UK. And um, she lives in the UK, England. And uh, it will be, it will be via Zoom call. Hopefully the life's not too bad, but yeah. And she, she's a, uh, just a sec here, I got this, I had it pulled up. Oh, it's gone. Just a moment here, let me see here. Yeah, she's an intuitive confidence coach an entrepreneur, spiritual purpose guide, a professional singer, and a podcast host, and an international best-selling author, and mashup queen and super mom. Mom, not mom. And, uh, yes. Um, but I'm just, I'm super excited to have her on the show. Um, yeah, it's like uh, she was one of the, she was one of the people that pretty much answered my call or replied to my comment on Gary Vee's post here a couple weeks ago. And she said she'd be on my show. So we connected and I can't wait till next week uh, to connect on um, connect via Zoom and she'll be on the show. Um, and, you know, I can't, I just, I can't wait to find out, uh, you know, what she's got to add, what value she's got to add to the show and add to the world via my show. And the week after that, I have in two weeks on, so next week on, what is it? Uh, yeah, January 29th, I have Lily Babcock. And then actually two weeks after that, I have, uh, a local, uh, 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 I'm not real sure exactly but how, to, how to introduce, but I'm just going to say uh, a local, I do, I do know he's a, a local real estate agent, and, um, you know, a friend of mine on Instagram, a follower of mine, and I follow him on Instagram, and um, we, you know, it's like we're both positive guys, and it's like I'd like to add his positivity to my show. And so that's going to be on, um, let's see, 
two weeks or or no, that's going to be shoot, I forgot what we said. Never mind. I think that's on February thirteenth. No, February fourteenth, I believe it is. Valentine's Day. Um but uh yeah. So that's about that's what I got going so far as my future shows and I have a I have a list of a bunch of people that uh, answered my call on Gary V's post, replied to my comments on there about being guests on my show. And so, you know, I have future guests for a little while. Um, just have to schedule them out, line them up on there. And so that's, that's about it. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I wanted to add? Uh, nope. <laughs> I think that's about that's about all the positive vibes, up positive vibes I can add for this morning. And I just want to thank you all for joining in and listening, viewing my show. Although right now there's not much to view since my camera's not working. <laughs> um, but I just want to, I'll close it out by saying the usual, um, just to stay, everyone stay kind, optimistic, and grateful, and have a phenomenal day and a phenomenal week. And I shall see you, ne or see you, or you'll hear from me next Sunday morning at 8 o'clock Pacific, same time, same place, same bat time, same bat place, same bat channel. Um, <laughs> here on VT Radio Universal in Tacoma, Washington. All right, and with that, I'll say ciao.